there, it's Anonymous Tea, where we spill the tea anonymously. Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, YouTubers. Hope you guys are all having an amazing day today, sending good vibes, sending positivity, sending blessings, and good energy to each and every single one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. So today we're talking Love and Marriage Huntsville and Love and Marriage DC. Y'all know why y'all here. Anything I say is alleged and in my personal opinion. This is for entertainment purposes only. None of this is personal, you guys. Uh, so I wanted to quickly recap some highlights uh, from Winter Wonderland, from Winter, formerly from Love and Marriage DC. I feel like she's my friend in my head. Um, a lot of times she just says things that I'm thinking or, or, or whatever. Ever. And so I caught a little bit of her live from the bushes, you guys. And uh, she basically, because I don't think she's been on live for a while, or, or at least a few days. I don't think I've seen her. So, uh, so when she popped out, you know, shortly after everybody's, you know, all, everything that's happening, uh, she had a lot of things to say. And so, um, you know, in regards to the youtube drama re revolving around the content creators winner basically said that she loves everyone she doesn't want to be forced to choose anybody uh she you know feels as though um she's not gonna move like she said pretty much for the most part there's a lot of content creators she likes there's very few that she doesn't like so it's not gonna be a situation of her where she's gonna have to like pick and choose or, or have some type of tug of war she she loves mostly everybody she got uh, contacted about Monique's interview. Somebody sent her some clips and a lot of people in her chat wanted her to talk about it. And so basically, uh, Winner said she saw a few clips and she feels that Monique has been vocal, that this isn't the first time that Monique has spoken about her experience in Love and Marriage DC. It's not new. Uh, but basically, when Winner exposed her experience, they made it seem like it was this huge deal that, that they've never heard of this before. Even some people went as far as to try to call Winter a liar and trying to say that she was just making things up or whatever, trying to get clout or trying to get attention and, and all of these things. And so nonetheless, uh, people tried to, you know, uh, you know, put things into a box. And she essentially was saying, you know, both for her as well as Monique, uh, they're simply giving their opinions on what their experience was on reality TV. And so nonetheless, uh, you're not trying to necessarily, you know, come at anybody but you basically want to be able to tell your truth and also spoke about how more of the reality stars are coming out and speaking out how she referenced how cynthia talked about her experience where they wanted her to expose the mr chocolate storyline with phaedra and how production was basically coaching her to quickly bring it up at that dinner and then we have Kenya, who was on Tamron Hall talking about finally admitting about the revenge pee and everything else, even though I disagree with her rationale on with Kenya's rationale on the revenge pee, but we'll talk about that separately. And also Nini has talked about a reality TV experience. Uh, so, but it's interesting because, you know, Winter said, listen, there, there's not this division where only certain people can say what they want to say and, and other people cannot. She said pretty much everybody is free to speak their experience. The thing is, not everybody wants to be real because there's some people who either are still under contract or even if they're not under contract, still want the potential benefit of whatever connections and relationships they had from their previous reality TV experience. And so she also didn't understand as well how people that are invoking God in their arguments for things and, uh, you know, talking about karma and all these things. And, and she's like, wouldn't it be the same token? God wouldn't like it for you to come for people or for other people to come for you. So nonetheless, like, how are you going to try to weaponize that against other people? But yet you are fostering an environment that is ungodly. Make it make sense. Uh, so she said, um, you know, 
people uh, are going to, some people are going to have good experiences. Some people are not going to have so good, you know, good things to say. And she said she felt Monique spoke her truth, telling the real of what goes on reality TV. And, and Winter essentially said she feels vindicated. She feels vindicated that everything that she has been saying has basically, you know, has been validated by another cast member. And so uh, she said that, you know, uh, people now have more freedom uh, to be more honest about reality TV, especially when you do not need the check, when you do not need the money for the show. And basically was saying that she doesn't need the show to pay her bills. Monique never needed reality TV to pay her bills. So therefore you have the autonomy to speak on what you want to say and nobody's gonna retaliate against you because one, you're not under contract. Two, you have your own money. So therefore uh, the ways that they think that they can get at you, it, it really isn't that serious. And so uh, Winter also threw shade because she basically was like, listen, I, I didn't have all of these uh, uh, doors open up to me to where everybody knows who I am uh, out here in these streets. And basically I can go to the grocery store, I can go places and nobody knows who I am because it's still a smaller scale. Remember I told you that there was people uh, that said that uh, that had lived or was familiar with, you know, uh, the Huntsville area and never heard of the reality show. <laughs> And didn't know the cast members, you guys. Uh, so, um, but basically she said that, um, you know, there's no reason people shouldn't be terrified uh, or scared to be honest about their truth. Um, you know, also she said, essentially, uh, she doesn't understand as well how the hypocrisy of it all, how some people they'll be quiet on larger celebrities or larger public figures that, you know, something is wrong, that, you know, something is outright inappropriate and outrageous. Um, but they will not speak out against that. They'll, they'll, they'll give the silent treatment, right? And so, but then if somebody thinks that they are above you and they consider you somebody lower than them, um, they'll treat you like you owe them something. And, um, and, and it, and it's just unfortunate, right? And so also she feels people don't know how to separate, uh, real from reality TV. She was grateful for the opportunity. She was grateful, uh, also confirmed again that Monique was responsible for casting everybody. And she said, um, and, and she's always reiterated this, that she's really only in contact with Ashley and that, uh, their significant others get along and, 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 and are friends and all of that good stuff. Uh, but, um, essentially she said, you know, Monique's never held back. So it, it's nothing, you know, that Monique's ever tried to sugarcoat anything. Uh, she doesn't understand when people are saying that they're promoting black excellence and, uh, you, you, you're not seeing promotion of black excellence. You're, you're seeing promotion of, of all types of, of foolery, dysfunction, madness, uh, people being, women being catty, black women tearing each other down, people bullying each other. And um, she just wants to know when the black excellence is going to come. And she said, black excellence isn't wearing designer labels and stunning on the gram about it. Like that's not black excellence. And she feels black excellence is showing healthy families, uh, healthy um, environments uh, where you're showing your day to day and that whatever normal trials and tribulations you go through, yes, that can be highlighted on reality TV, but not some of the manipulation and the lies that take place that get escalated on reality TV. And she says, you know, this notion where we're not even seeing families anymore, building wealth, building generational wealth, but it's turned into, especially for black reality TV is who is sleeping with who, um, you know, and, um, you know, basically it's just embarrassing, you know, especially for us in the black community, because it's like, you know, you're already held to a certain standard. And it's very easy to make the black woman uh, the scapegoat of everything and the issue of everything. And so when you see that basically being portrayed on a lot of these reality shows is like the angry black woman, it's just exhausting. 
And it's hard for people to defend themselves and plead their case if there are a certain amount of the audience that buys in to the narrative. And they may not realize that the scene may have been manipulated, the storyline may have been manipulated to present a certain outcome. And so she said, basically gave the comparison of the White Real Housewife shows on Bravo that they could basically act a complete fool. They can even act worse than black women on reality TV and still will get opportunities and still will get praised and celebrated. But that is not the same energy that they gave the black woman. Black women are always going to be judged for it. Also, um, as well, uh, and also talked about as well, even in real life, that um, white people will always work together, even if they hate each other's guts, even if they just cussed each other out, because they'll look at the big picture like, hey, we need to get this money together. And so, um, so there's that. Also, um, she said that uh, who you really are as a person versus what reality TV wants to, you know, portray you. She felt it was counterproductive, which is ultimately the reason why Winter left. Uh, but nonetheless, she said she's not going to be dragged based off of something that's fake or manipulated or, or whatever. Um, that that's just basically messing with mess. So, um, nonetheless, she was also talking about, you know, potential reality shows that they can come up with, uh, showing black excellence. And it sounds like she kind of hinted that something we may potentially see her in something in the future, but talked about, you know, just, and, and, and this was kind of a mix of her saying things as well as reading comments about people suggesting like a black startup business or a group of people that are, you know, entrepreneurs and showing kind of the, the ups and downs that go with that. Um, but basically saying that, you know, they try to brainwash, they, they try to tell you and discourage you, oh, people are not going to watch a show that doesn't have all this drama, but they, they try to do that to try to continue to basically push their, their own drama and their own agenda to still try to keep their core demo, uh, buying into their foolery. Right. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, she just feels that Love and Marriage Huntsville, and that was another thing, she felt as though she's not sure if she wants to continue reviewing Love and Marriage Huntsville and everything that's going on with it because she feels that it's just exhausting and it's just too much drama, it's too much mess, um, and, and now you have the issues with the YouTubers and she feels like some of the storylines are just a hot mess. Uh, you know, she feels that like they did a good job revamping Real Housewives of Potomac. It's a lot more lighthearted and, and all of the things. And so nonetheless, she just feels that Love and Marriage Huntsville, they're not doing anything new. She feels the show has ran its course. Uh, she feels that everything associated with the show right now is just completely negative and toxic. And um, she's not sure that Love and Marriage Huntsville uh, can be saved at this point. And that, and that it could be revamped like what Bravo was doing with a lot of their Housewives franchises. Uh, and she felt as though regular drama is fine. Um, again, said that uh, she's happy about Monique speaking her truth. She felt that Latrice is honest and she's not one to play with. Uh, she said, Monique can't be lying and everybody can't be lying that is speaking out and saying the same stories about their work experience on these reality TV shows. And she said, it's nothing personal against the actual person per se, but it's just that this isn't serving black people well. And also, she also wanted to comment on Aikisha because it looks like somebody spoke to her because she took down that post on Twitter. Remember, she was upset with production because she felt that this was like an um, like her own type of moment. And they put that clip into the opening uh, credits of the Bell Collective. And she felt that this was something she told the producer in confidence that this was just something that, you know, that she was just messing around or just kind of having a lighthearted moment and didn't like uh, that particular uh, clip being there, but now it's not there. It is not there. But she said that, you know, this happens a lot of time with reality TV. You can express some things. However, uh, you know, 
uh, if you point this out and then you see something later that you don't like, like that's, it's just not a good relationship. And he says that, she says that reality TV, there's like bakery, but then there's still real life. Um, and so, uh, you know, she, a lot of people were asking her questions about production as far as like, if everybody in production is just flat out messy. She did say that there was one producer who looked out for her. There was one producer in particular who refused to go gutter level just to get a scene or just to get something um, messy for content and all of that. She also talked about, cause somebody asked her as well, if she had Carlos King's phone number. And she said she did not. Because remember Carlos King? Anytime he uh, hears through the grapevine that any of his cast members, uh, former or current, have an issue with him, that they have his number. But she said she doesn't have his number. And she said she only believes that Carlos King's quote unquote favorites uh, have his number. But even that, I feel, varies on the season and varies on what's going on. And then there was a question that was asked as well, why, um, you know, do you feel like the Scots are protected or whatever? And um, basically said that, you know, these producers have their favorites. They have their favorites that they're going to protect. And I've said this on several videos that you can tell the people who are desperate and are begging to continue to continue the gravy train of love and marriage Huntsville because they are begging to continue to, you know, fulfill this fantasy uh, of being a reality TV star. So they're willing to sell out their friendships. They're willing to sell out their marriage. They're willing to sell out anything if it means that they can still be on the show. And then in return, if as long as they're willing to contribute to the mess, as long as they're willing to be a part of the mess or instigate the mess, in return, their real lives don't have to be shown. So um, nonetheless, she said that uh, even her first season on the show, that she was told that uh, things would get better for her by episode eight or nine. And um, nonetheless, uh, like it's just it's just crazy. But she said a lot of things were coming to light. Um, she feels that the Family Empire Houston show is a good show, but but it kind of has like disappeared. We haven't heard anything. I still can't find ratings for the show. Uh, but she just feels like a lot of this audience that came over from Bravo, uh, you know, they're they're tired, they're exhausted of everything that is being shown. And, you know, at this point, you're going to have to do an overhaul of sorts to get the audience to buy back in. Uh, also, um, what else did she say? But uh, basically, oh, somebody asked her what other, if she ever had an opportunity to do reality TV again, what would Winter do? And Winter said uh, she would do The Traitor, she would do The Amazing Race, uh, Big Brother, and, and things like that but she just feels like everything about Love and Marriage DC was just completely and utterly toxic. Uh, she said she was paid W-2, and she also did a comparison and kind of some shade, basically said the minimal scene that she was in on Bravo, uh, she got, she was treated well by protection, and she immediately got paid. So it seems like uh, people are not getting paid on time or when they should or if you take a year off to air before you air the next season of a show uh your pay is probably impacted right uh so so there's that then a lot of people were telling winter some of the backstory as to what candy um a few reasons why candy fell out with carlos king but a major reason was him trying to do an unauthorized escape uh documentary behind candy and the group's back and, tr and interviewing candy's mom and trying to interview other people and then once Candy got wind of it and uh, the group got wind of it, that's when uh, they shut down Carlos King. Uh, she said there's no reality payments in uh, reality TV. She feels that Jocelyn is the only person on Zeus that might have negotiated uh, to get royalties. But pretty much uh, whatever your pay is, is your pay. Um... And that was kind of it. And um, where I left off uh, was she was kind of questioning what Love and Marriage Huntsville was actually doing as far as this Trish and Marquez storyline. Because it just, it just does not make any sense, period. 
So, um, so that was mostly what Winner said. And, um, you know, for most, the most part, I mean, I agree, right? Like, we're, everybody that's coming out, even Stormy said that the pay wasn't good and she alluded to the work environment and everything else. She had been throwing all this shade, but Carlos King doesn't want to talk about that. And it's interesting that Carlos King, he gets on these tangents, but he has misplaced anger. He has very misplaced anger. So nonetheless, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, what else unfolds, what is going to come of this next uh, Mr. Monday episode. But all of these people that are speaking out about Carlos King and how he treats people in the toxic work environment and how uncomfortable these people are to the point that they just flat out quit because they were lied to of what their experience was supposed to be on reality TV. And they got portrayed a completely different narrative on the show. And a lot of people as well don't care because some people are just so desperate to be reality TV stars. But between Winter, Monique, uh, Latrice, uh, you know, all of these people that continue, Cynthia, Candy, everybody continues to expose this. So everybody can't just be out here lying. And you can't blame the Melometers for, for all of your misfortunes or, or all the things that are wrong in your life. You need to take accountability. People are saying your own former and current cast members are saying the problem is you. The problem is your toxic work environment. The problem is you being the puppet master of all of this foolishness and all of this chaos. And until it changes, people are going, it's going to continue to be this, uh, this cloud of negativity, this cloud of toxicity, this cloud of darkness. And, and that's why I said, you know, people really have to manage how they're going to approach the show, whether you are blacking out of the show or whether you're tuning in to certain uh, content creators that discuss the show and all the things, but you have to ha find a way to manage yourself outside of this show and not getting yourself attached or emotionally, you know, involved in all these things because it just takes you down a negative spiral, you guys. And, and you know, it, and the irony in all this is that we watch reality TV, we watch these shows to, to escape, right? To have some time to escape and to be entertained. But this isn't entertaining, it's absolutely draining. It's absolutely exhausting. It, it's literally a chore. Literally at this point, even the two to five minute clips on Instagram of these episodes, even that is daunting to watch. Especially when you know these people can't stand each other. And, and these people don't get it. And I said this uh, plenty of times as it pertained to uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta when pretty much everything was divided after um, Carlos King's, you know, grand big uh, exit of a storyline, allegedly, that took place and, and caused all the divide is the problem is, you know, as a viewer, we bought into the show as the cast working together as a collective. However, if there's going to be division, if there's not going to be a resolve of the storyline and you, you're just going to have this big cloud or certain people aren't going to film together or people are only going to film together when it's a cast trip or it's a reunion taping, it, it's not fun for the viewer to watch because it's very passive aggressive. It's very negative and it's just very toxic. But it's obvious that Carlos King does not want to develop anything that shows any type of versatility. He thinks this is the only thing people want to watch. And that's not true. But nonetheless, uh, there is that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment I post new content on my channel. And with that being said, I'll talk to you guys again very soon.